Hello and good evening. Welcome to the Business of Property. I'm your host, Cheryl Leong from Property Development Australia. How are we all doing? We are live in YouTube, Facebook, and I believe on LinkedIn as well. Um, anyone that's here, thank you for, for joining us. Comment below. Today, we've got a really exciting topic um, and with an exceptional guest, Steve Brennan, who has been in the development space for a long time. And he is, I'd like to say, the king of property development sites hunting sites hunting site hunting in queensland we're going to be talking about hunting down development sites which is you know in property development australia the community is obviously something that we're all very keen to find out what the tips and tricks are so i'm going to welcome to the business of property steve brennan come on down hi cheryl g'day steve yeah. how are you doing yeah very well thanks for having me no, great, great to have you. Steve, tell us a little bit about your background in the property space and how you ended up starting Brandcorp. Uh, yeah, well, I was probably started out in property development in the late 90s working for other people. So fresh out of uni, was lucky enough to, to jag a job with another property developer. Uh, so did my apprenticeship there with them, sort of worked for two private property developers for about 15 years. Um, and then after that, really always wanted to do something for myself and then moved out into, um, into Brincorp, uh, and yeah, started to uh, do the bit I like, which is the upfront part, which is the, the side acquisitions and the hunting, if you like. That's the, the bit that sort of gets me out of bed, gets me out of bed each morning. So, uh, then I concentrated on, yeah, becoming a buyer's agent and, and really working, um, towards making that a, a, a full time business. Fantastic. So tell us a bit about what's been happening in the Queensland market and what you've seen in the Queensland market over the, the past, I guess, two years, particularly with COVID. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, COVID's, um, you know, I guess, thrown the cat amongst the pigeons with a number of people, but the, the property market up here is certainly uh, booming. There's um, not much supply still across all sectors. Uh, so anything going on the market sort of hotly contested and development sites are the same. Um, I'm finding uh, vendors, uh, the gap between vendors' expectations and, and what developers are prepared to pay, there's a bit of a gap at the moment. Certainly in the last couple of months, uh, vendors are probably uh, difficult, would be nice, or challenging, <laughs> would be a nice way to describe them. Uh, and that's just because of the hype in the market. There is, you know, if they do, you know, I'm, I obviously try to buy development sites off market, uh, mostly if they're talking to agents, the agents are, are getting to put them online and get it going to auction, which makes it very competitive. Uh, mm. But we're still in there, I guess, grinding away each day to, to try and get a deal done. So certainly getting vendors talking to us and still there's opportunities out there. Um, they're just harder to convert at the moment, I'm finding. But yeah, certainly COVID, it was, it's been up and down for the last um, uh, two years. Uh, but yeah, the market's pretty hot up here. So uh, the yeah. end product, getting the, the selling product, so sale of land is you, know, you can't find land to sell, so, oh, to buy, sorry. Yeah. So developers are, you know, if they can get anything to the market, they're selling quite well and at good prices. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's been exceptional capital growth over the past year in particular uh, with the announcement of of the Olympics. I mean, do you see this slowing down at any point or are we going to be seeing some ridiculous growth over the next five <laughs> to ten years? What, 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 are, what are your forecasting? Uh, yeah, and no, I think the growth is going to continue. Um, yeah, well, you've, got, yeah, you've got the Olympics, we've got... Um, the casinos getting built. We've got cross, uh, yeah, cross river rails being built at the moment. So these are all very large billions of dollars um, infrastructure projects, which are just adding to all that capital growth, adding to facilities everywhere. And the Olympics sort of are coming at the end of that, um, I think is going to top it all off. So yeah, if the supply, I mean, the issue at the moment, I think supply is low, but even I think that there's a fair bit of pent up demand there. So any, anything that comes on the market's been sort of snapped up. So I think as we go, a lot of the existing stocks getting snapped up already. Um, mm. But yeah, I can see it sort of going for another another couple of years at least. And then, you know, there'll be more infrastructure projects announced as the Olympics get closer. And um, it's all just yeah, adding to that, to the property mm. boom that's going on up here. Uh, so I can't see an end in sight at the moment. I mean, certainly there's issues around supply of building products. I guess that's the only thing that mm. might slow things down is the cost of that is is increasing every every week, every month at the moment, um, talking to builders. So mm. that's certainly something to keep an eye on. Uh, as And that, again, that's a supply issue. We can't get the materials, timber and steel in particular, into Australia. Um, mm. Or we can, but at higher prices. So 
you know, that may, may affect construction, um, which, you know, but if values continue to rise, then it's covering that increase. Yeah, when, and, and I know I read um, an article over the weekend talking about this sort of um, uh, the concern and the issue around rising um, materials prices, and that's all across Australia, um, and how that's going to be impacting builders. And I think so. One of the things we might even talk about it's it's going. You know, if you are looking looking to build with someone, the things to yep. sort of look out for as well, because um, I'm sure people who are developing. That's all right. They might be able to develop and, and provide the land. It's it's in on the on the other side, the buyer side, to sort of look at, okay, um, if you've gone into fixed price contract and things like that, to how to protect themselves as well. Yeah, so um, yeah. today I'm really excited because I I know that everyone wants to know how to find those unicorns, <laughs> the off market off market sites, but we're going to yeah. share a little bit from your your experience. Um, both on market and off market tips and yep. pro tips and, and tools that you use as a professional buyer's agent for development sites that yep. everyone in the community can use today and, and start to implement. So I think there's going to be a heap amount of value. Mm -hmm. So whoever is here, please feel free to pop so stay to the very end because we've got a bit of a, a giveaway as well, don't we, Steve? Yeah, yeah, indeed. Along no, the way, we'll figure out what they give away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, we do. Excellent, excellent. All righty, so let's let's jump into it. How do we hunt down some development sites? Yeah, sure. Um, let's go up on the screen now. Um, my mouse. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, yeah, a little bit about me. Uh, oop, what you uh, alluded to at the start. I mean, Bring Corps, you know, a licensed buyers agent, and we exclusively sought uh, sourced development sites for property developers, primarily in um, South East Queensland, um, which is all the councils from, you know, Gold Coast to Sunshine Coast and out, out west to, to Ipswich and Toowoomba. Um, so there's sort of, I guess, um, five uh, five main methods that I, I use that I find, um, uh, which I'll talk about each of these individually, but certainly deals are mine. So that's your, 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 um, your real estate dot coms and your domains are mine. Uh, direct mail, I think, is still very powerful at the moment. Uh, real estate agents uh, is, is, is another one, which I'll, I'll, I'll get into more detail about, but certainly they're a, uh, a necessary evil. So there's a bit of a love-hate relationship with agents, but um, they've certainly got their um, finger on the pulse in, in the good ones on, in their suburbs. Uh, social media, and then when I mean social media, it's more around social media networking as well. So it's uh, being involved in groups like yours. Um, there's certainly groups for just development sites, um, but also LinkedIn and engaging with property professionals, so real estate agents, town planners, builders in the industry. So growing your network uh, in and around, you know, people that are in the same industry as you. Uh, and then, and fifthly, is also mindset and routine, which is part of uh, obviously combining all of that to how do you get it to work. Uh, and I guess I guess my approach is a little bit different. In I like the uh, the automation of it as well. So how do you do this? at scale, uh, when you've got multiple, I'm looking for multiple sites at the time, so how do you do it at scale um, every day as well? So that's Yeah, I think it. that's so, a really, really good point yeah. around putting a system system and automation in place, whether that's automating um, technology or automating through um, the help of other people. Yeah, as correct. Well. Yeah, and I, and I do both. Yeah, there's, there's software yeah. and that can help and also people that help, so I, I do both. Amazing. So. Um, I'll sort of get to the oops, get to the um, first one. So deals online. So I guess it, it sounds a bit obvious, but certainly um, you know your the normal uh, searches you can do on realestate.com uh, and also domain. I prefer realestate.com. I think it, it does get more listings, but you know that might be a, a Queensland thing as well. I know some of the southern states get more traction from domain, but uh, it's free to join. You can set up a profile. What I love doing. You can set up a profile and then set up saved searches. So um, you can do the traditional filters of setting up by property size uh, or by the suburb, uh, those type of things. So I'm obviously looking for development uh, sites. So if you just did a, a property search for like 810 square meters in certain suburbs, you'll get a lot of properties and, and most of them won't be development sites. Some will, but some won't. Um, so what I do is filter by keywords, which is something you can do in realestate.com. So I'll go given a couple of examples there. So uh, splitter is a word that real estate agents use a lot. Um, STCA, so subject to council approval. 
agents use a lot, uh, and detonate's another one they use. So they actually use reno renovate or detonate as their catchphrase. Yep. Um, so what you're trying to think of is words the real estate agents commonly use when they're online and when they're doing their copyright for their ads. And then this is a way of filtering those those sites to come up. So they're not always going to be 100% development sites, but what it does give you a good list of development sites that are online very quickly and on a daily mm -hmm. basis as well. So those lists change mm -hmm. every day. So are we? Are you talking about individual search filters? So I'm thinking that you've got one one filter for splitter, one filter for subject to council approval. Okay. Yeah, yeah. correct. Yes, I've probably got, and then I I do my quite a wide broad search, but I'll have in Brisbane City Council, the Greater Brisbane area, then I'll have the Greater Gold Coast area. So I've actually got multiple mm -hmm. searches. So, but within each council area, I've probably got about eight to ten saved searches that every day get checked to see what new properties have been added. Uh, and then we contact those agents uh, and find out, you know, more about the property again, getting your name out there, telling them what you're after. Um, and the other, you know, and the good thing with the, you know, the online search engines, you, you can have the mobile app on your phone, so you can be anywhere. Um, when you, because when you sign in, you can then sign in on your app, and it brings up all your saved searches. You just click through the saved searches each day, um, so you can do it on the run on the mobile, and then you can just, you know, call agents, email agents, get in front of them, let them know what you're doing. So. Um, yeah, it's a good source of mm. finding out where development sites are and also where the suburbs are that are getting a lot of the sales for development sites as well. So, and of course, through these search engines, you can narrow down by um, suburb. Um, yeah, so one of the tips, I guess I've got a few little tips there. Um, to automate, I actually, doing this every day, it becomes, you know, if I've got eight searches across multiple council areas, I actually use one of your virtual assistants, Danica, to help me do that each day. So. Um, Danica go, clicks on each of the searches every day, contacts each of the agents for the new sites that are added, uh, and then makes contact via email with them. Uh, mm. And then we actually you know, use that, which I talk about in, in item three, where I add them into my database as well, the real estate agents. Uh, but it's just a good way of contacting, letting them know what we're looking for across all my buyers, and then uh, letting, and also asking them what else they've got. So they've got the online stuff, but then we always ask the question, what else do they have? What have they got coming up? Um, you know, do they have any pocket listings, anything off market as well? So mm. Mm. Um, the other, the other, just on online is I guess that for sale by owner, uh, when there's not an agent involved, they're always good ones to target as well, to talk to them directly to find out, you know, what they're looking for, uh, rather than sometimes the agents, you know, they're, they're, they're working for the seller. That's always, remember that, um, I'm working for the buyer, so I want the best result for my buyers. Um, whereas when it's for sale by owner, I guess, yeah, I can, get directly to the owner straight away rather than sort of the gatekeeper of the of the real estate agent. Um, Steve, just to, just with the for sale by owner, are they yeah. are they coming up on realestate.com as well? Yes, yeah, those the filtered searches that I do, they'll they'll show up. If they <laughs> they don't quite use the same words as say a, a real estate agent does, but a lot of time they get the copyright, it'll talk about a yeah, development site or a subdivision or a splitter uh, and there's some key words there that yeah grab yeah. those ads to pop up as well. Um, so there's a little giveaway to what I've done actually there is the, there's a link there um, I don't know if you want to talk about that but well I'll PDF this um, presentation so people can get a copy of the presentation you can actually click on that link and that'll take you to the realestate.com search that I do for splitter box in the Brisbane area so it sort of shows you straight away um, uh, what comes up and then you can just see what's added each each day or each week as you, when you get on mm. there and check it out I said it's it's pretty much a, a daily update correct yeah, and, and it's a good barometer of what's happening on a daily basis in, in for development sites. You know, how many are on there? How many have been added recently? Uh, is it quiet at the moment? So it's a good feel for the market, if you like, too. So it's also good market intel. What other property, even if it doesn't suit your, you know, particular requirements, it's giving you good intel on what they're asking for it, where it is, uh, what mm. what what it can be, what how it can be developed as well. So it's sort of yeah, good research and market intel as well at the same time. Mm. Mm. And they flush out an opportunity too. So, yeah, because uh, because a lot of agents do have other listings that aren't aren't online. That's that's the bonus of it. Yeah, and the thing that you, that keeps coming up um, that you've mentioned is is this relationship with agents yeah. uh, and building that relationship with them because they might have posted something, but they said they might have something that's actually not listed and is yeah, off correct. Mark. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so it's a good way of just getting a list to make. And I talk about a bit more of that in in number three under real estate agents. So mm -hmm. I think uh, number two is the next one, which is the direct mail. So I guess uh, a lot of people have, have, have done direct mail before as well. I mean, um, 
it, there's software out there that can help you with that as well. Um, what I find is it's best to be very specific with your, your direct mail, not just, you know, I never send a letter to an entire street or an entire suburb, mm -hmm. which real estate agents probably do when they do letterbox drops. But, you know, I, you know there's software and uh, online sites that can narrow down by zoning, narrow down by size, narrow down by frontage, and then only send those sites that you want to. So then in a street, there might be, um, you know, some with flooding as well. So you don't want to necessarily send to the ones that have got flood overlays. I just want to target the ones that you know uh, are good. So I suggest just testing all types of different mail. Um, I found for me the best way is, is a the professional approach. So I come as a, a very professional, um, uh, I guess, letter, letterhead, um, all very well presented. Uh, and it's more about also, I guess you want them to open the mail initially, but it's also getting just a conversation started and how you can help them. So that's what you got to try and convey Mm. In, in your letter and like I said yeah test test different colors test handwritten notes test all those things all are good and I get varying results depending on, on where the market's at but I've like I said I've found that the best way for me is the, the professional approach uh, and then also keeping track of it so um, keeping track of who you've sent the letters to how many letters you've sent so I think my next slide I'll talk about that a bit more it's not just around you know one letter you know it's, it's as many as five or six letters before you actually get a response um, you will get people, I get people that call me and ask me not to send them any more letters, which is fine, or they'll say they'll contact me when they're ready, which is okay too, at least I, and I'll note that on my thing, just to, on my spreadsheet or actually in my database to say, well, I'll, let, I'll leave them be then. Uh, at least, you know, you're getting, you're getting a conversation. So, yeah. you know, they've yeah. opened it, they're looking at it. Um, so, I guess, that, yeah, that was, I'll just get to the next screen. Um, and and with with your direct mail, Steve. I mean, at the moment, obviously, it's a very 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 competitive market. It is. Um, I mean, in in a normal market, typically, what sort of response rate would you expect from letters? Uh, it is low. I'm probably sitting at about three to four percent still. So out of a hundred, we get three or four people contact you. Um, but if it comes down to, to numbers, you've just got to get. The volume of letters out and the following up um, as is key. Uh, you've got to be um, not embarrassed to send five or six letters until they actually tell you to stop sending letters. That's yeah. <laughs> or yeah. and, and a lot of time it's timing. So probably on their first letter they're not thinking of selling. By the the second yes. or third letter maybe they are thinking of selling. So yeah. um, I've I've got a, a current block that I've been sent a letter to, been talking to the owners probably for over six months now. Um, but they're not ready to sell. So I just keep in touch with them now. They're on my system of nurturing. We touch base once a month. They mm -hmm. let me know where they're up to, what they're doing. And, you know, ultimately they've said, you know, they will give me the site to, to find a buyer, but mm -hmm. you just got to be patient and, um, uh, and continue to work with them. Yeah, we've got a we've got a few people um, making some comments. Say it's a numbers game. Absolutely, persistency is one of the keys. And you're right yes. with the numbers game because I've come across a few people that have said I've sent out a hundred letters. I haven't had any responses. Yeah. I go well. Try a thousand. Yes. Try yeah, correct. Two thousand. Yeah. Try five, yeah. like you know, it, it is, and and if you work off um, a percentage of three to four percent, and you've sent out five thousand letters, say for example, yeah, um, you know, just do yeah, correct, you got to that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and I think, um, yeah, and it, and, it, and it varies. So I've sent out in a batch one hundred and fifty letters and didn't get one response, where I've sent out fifteen letters in a batch and got seven responses. So it really does go up and down, and you've just got to keep at it. Um, yeah. Do the next 15 because that might be the 15 that get you seven responses. The first yeah. 150 don't work, but the next 15 get you seven. So um, yeah. that's why you've got to keep going. And you also mentioned sending them um, uh, numerous letters as well. Yes. So the same the same owners, well, not necessarily the same letter, but no. be able to send them another letter. <laughs> Correct. Follow them up, yeah. And then just have a little yeah. point of difference or try to start a conversation mm. or – uh, and like I said, yeah, people will tell you if they don't don't want, or they're not interested in selling at all ever. They'll tell you or take take them off their list. Um, you'll find, you know, yes, it is competitive. So there is, you know, you talk to people and say, oh, this is the hundredth letter I've received from developers. But again, you've just got to start a conversation. At least they've rung you, so you started a conversation. Mm -hmm. So um, then you can, you know, build on that rapport and stay in touch with them and call them back, send them an email if you get their email address if they're happy to share that. Uh, and then so just build that relationship with them over time until they're yeah. ready.
yeah, so timing's everything, but you've got to keep restarting the clock every time you send a letter. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and um, I, I I remember sending a letter out, and uh, and I think it was about five years after the owners reached out. <laughs> and yes, said, yeah, yeah, and I've had. Like, yeah, it's interesting. I've had letters. Yeah, twelve months. I even emails I send to real estate agents. It's twelve months later, and I get a response. That's happened mm. multiple times. So people do keep yeah. them. They file them away. They tag them in their inbox, and then mm. when they're ready, they come back to you. So it's not necessarily wasted. Yes, um, it just takes time. Absolutely, because not everyone's wanting to sell at the same time. <laughs> yeah, correct. Exactly. Yeah, it wouldn't be nice. Unless you're in uh, Brisbane, then everyone does. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I guess, yeah, just some of my automation tip, I've started using Stash um, to track and send to direct mail. So that that allows me to keep a good database of everyone I've contacted as well, as well as mm -hmm. the multiple letters as it goes along. Um, the And they've also got an in-house printing capability. So I used to print all the envelopes out at home, um, handwrite the envelopes, send them out myself. But I found this is, uh, I'm still getting the same amount of response using a more automated process. Um, and so yeah, that's, yeah, that definitely helps. And I've also got my Danica, my virtual assistant, um, does a lot of the property research now for me, stashes all the properties that, you know, I've set the criteria for, and then I just want to re review them and we, and we do a mail out every week. So we're now consistently mailing out every week and then we follow up, you know, every week as well. So uh, at the right time. Yeah, um, I've got a question here. Many, well, many developers don't like Stash and prefer Land Checker. What are your views on that? I'm interested to hear. Um, uh, sorry, I can't tell who's commented there, but have they have they said um, why they don't like Stash and prefer Land Checker? Because I know they're different tools, and everyone, you know, they all do sort of similar things, different but things. They, they, yeah, they're, yeah. they're different as well. Um, yeah, I have looked at Land Checker. I don't think Land Checker has the mailing capabilities that Stash does. No. I think Land Checker might be better at finding the site that you want or that you're targeting to narrow down, which is my approach it there, aim small, miss small, um, to really target down to a property. Whereas the, the Stash allows you to, it's almost like a database of properties you've contacted uh, and lets you do the automatic mailing. So I think yeah. it's probably two separate software. And I don't think Land Checker's, uh, it's only just beta testing or just come out in Queensland. So. Um, I'm not sure if Land Checker has a capability to actually export data into lists. As yeah, I'm well. not sure on that one. Mm. Yeah, not updated frequently enough. Is that for Stash? That will be interesting. Right. I'd uh, say, yeah, yeah, potentially. Yeah, and um, you've got to be careful. Yeah, I mean, the, the data contained in these software, same as, you know, Price Finder, Stash, it's only as good as. Um, whoever input, inputted it. So you do have to do your checks yeah. and balances. <laughs> yeah. I've got another comment here. In business, 80% of sales happen on or after the fifth point of contact. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yet yeah, only 8% yeah, yeah. of businesses actually get there. The same methodology applies in property deal finding. Absolutely. Mm, yes. Correct. Um, yeah, and so that. we, yeah, we, we do that. And I, I really like that you've mentioned that as well, that it's about send a few letters yes. to the same same property. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, like I said, yeah, that was my the pro tip there. I guess I'm small, miss small, but um, uh, and then I've actually put in there if you download the PDF, my exact letter that I send out for to yeah. one of my letters. I've got a couple, but that's one of my uh, direct mail letters there that I send out to to client or to potential development site owners. Yeah. Um, so stay stay to the very stay. end if you want to get a copy of that letter because I know that's one of the questions we get all, asked all the time. Do you have a template letter that I can use? Yes, yeah, for sure. So happy to happy to share that. Um, yeah, so real estate agents, I guess, yeah, like I said, they're a necessary evil, but I mean, what I find with real estate agents, um, I tend to go very wide with real estate agents and contact a lot. So I think I've got four and a half thousand now in my database um, and You'll find agents move around a lot as well. Uh, the good ones will bubble to the surface. So it's just, again, about being consistent, getting the agents that are selling development sites. A lot of agents never sell a development site in their entire career, but some are in certain areas. If that's your target areas where there are development sites, so it's worth building relationships with them and staying in contact with them regularly. So I guess my advice on agents is to, to think about their, they're very busy as well. So um, I find different agents respond to different forms of communication. It's finding, you know, some respond to emails, some prefer to text, um, some prefer phone calls. Uh, so it's really finding out what they like and then using that to, 
to stay in touch with them. Um, they can be slow coming back, but again, it's it's like we talked about the fifth or sixth call. <laughs> if you don't hear them the first couple, you keep trying. I generally, when I'm chasing an agent, I'll do all three. I'll call, text, and email all at the same time, and then that's the follow up: call, text, mm-hmm. email, call, text, email. Uh, keep doing that to to get in touch with them, um, and then you know find out what they're doing as well. So you know find out what you know they've got a lot of market intel there at the cold face every day talking to vendors. Um, so they're a great source of information. Um, you just got to get them at the right time that you know suits mm. them. You know, obviously a Friday or sorry, a Saturday morning is not the best time when they're doing all their open homes and and running around. But uh, if you can get the timing right, um, you know, start finding out. You know, making their lives easier, I suppose. Mm. You know, tell them what you're looking for, your budget, what areas, what type of property. Um, but yeah, you, you want to be top of mind for the right reasons. You don't want to be annoying, I guess, is my point. But uh, I also find they want to you know put you on their mailing list, which I don't mind. You can easily unsubscribe nowadays. So I always ask just to be put on the developer builder mailing list rather than the generic ones. So you're getting more development style sites coming through and off market sites too. So I've got a lot of agents that do that and you know, their persistent just mails it out each each day or each week and you check them out. So Yeah. And how I mean how how often are you reaching out to these agents? Like is this a is this a weekly thing, monthly thing, or? Uh, initially, it's sort of, yeah, I guess uh, over the first week, getting them, you know, trying to get in contact, trying to get that, and then slowly moving into pretty well a monthly. Once I've sort of made contact, um, introduced ourselves, um, so they know what we're, what we're looking for. You know, generally, it's a bit of back and forth about, you know, budgets and types of property and those types of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it's getting into a monthly, because I, I guess acting as a buyer's agent as well, I'm, giving them my buyer requirements all the time as well. So just reminding them, you know, we've got someone looking for this type of property in our townhouse side in these suburbs. Um, and then, you know, then they remember you, like I said, they'll, they remember it 12 months later. Are you still looking for development sites? They'll give me a call. Yes, mm. always looking. So yeah, yeah it's yeah. true. Um, yeah, I've got some comments here. I had a lady oh, no. recently said she would rather burn down, <laughs> burn down in her house <laughs> then sell to a developer. Wow, that's some uh, pretty passionate words there. Yes, that was an right. interesting conversation. That's interesting that she made time to have that conversation with you. Yeah, correct. Yeah. As well. <laughs> so oh, I yeah, find it's, a, it's, it's an interesting industry you work in. Yeah, absolutely. And um, for developers in Victoria, it seems best to send letters to vendors rather than agents because off markets are also sent to buyers and it makes BAs look stupid when they go to clients saying, I found an off market opportunity and they've already seen it. Yeah. And I think that's really, um, and we've, we've brought this up before. There's, there's off market, true off market and then pre market yes, as well, which does go to the agent, but the agent sort of going, let me just have a look to see who in my database. Yeah, correct. Yeah, they're 200 um, closest friends, get it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And off-market, I mean, I always look at off-market as dealing directly with the the owner. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and that's where direct mail definitely gets you that. Um, mm. You know, your preference is, yeah, certainly once a lead comes in, if you're dealing direct with the owner, that's definitely the preference. And what are the key benefits, Steve? For dealing, dealing directly with the owner. No, the owner. Oh, I with the owner. <laughs> um, well, well, I guess yeah, you, you're getting it at the coal face. So you're, you're getting their real reactions to, you know, is it the price that's important? Is it the the terms that are important? Is it um, certainly a lot of um, big sites in, in Brisbane are uh, old Queenslanders on large blocks of land, so they're very they're elderly people. They're in their eighties or nineties, um, down to the point where you know they don't have the technology, they don't have emails and text messages, or they haven't moved for forty years, so. Really, once you, when you're talking, the biggest benefit when you're talking to a vendor is you're finding out what their pain points are. So you can mm-hmm. either solve them, or maybe you can't, but ideally you can solve them. So it is, I don't know any movers. Well, I'll get you a list of three movers, or I'll pay for your moving. Um, or it might be, you know, I need to, to look at some retirement villages and you know, helping them with that, if you can introduce someone that's you know, in that space. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, they, they'll put up a lot of barriers or you know, brick walls to say why they can't sell. Uh, and if you can slowly chip away at those to solve their problems. Um, yeah. And sometimes it's just money or it's just timing, um, which is nice and simple to solve. You can solve those or you, maybe you can't, but if it's too much money, you can't solve it. Yeah. Uh, but, or, or you can over time. So you might be able to get that price, but 
here's how a structure would work. Yes. And then, you, and then you're automatically getting their, you know, their feedback on on that. Uh, yeah. To see whether they like the idea of a deferred settlement or waiting for for DA to be approved. Mm, mm. And and I think the the point that you make about being being able to see what they're they're open to the terms and and the point here is about what are their needs, right? Yeah. How can we how can we cater to their needs but still um, craft a win win situation? Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean you're not going to buy it unless they're getting what they want, I suppose. So mm. it's sort mm. of some things you can't you can't budge on, and there's you know certain development yeah. stuff that we have to do and have to have, um, but there are others that we can be flexible and. Um, come up with some create. Yeah, you've got to come up with some, you know, what's your point of difference? You've got to come up with some creative solutions to solve yeah. their problems. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, someone said build a no like and trust relationship with agents, and it's the same with vendors. Absolutely, um, mm. this is how you create sales attraction, and it, it is. It's it's so much about relationships because it, you know, yes, often it is about the price, and you know, everyone wants the top price. Yeah, but at the end day if you are able to to provide a solution to them and they see value in that solution it doesn't necessarily always have to be about the highest price or about the yeah. price correct yeah, that's right the price yeah there might be other things that are more important mm. in, in their world yeah um i'm just going to go to the next uh yeah so i guess yeah that, I, my automation that's how i use uh, Entreport, which is just a CRM, but you can use a spreadsheet. You know, start, I started off with a spreadsheet, uh, and then, which keeps track of um, yeah, who you've contacted, when you last mm. spoke to them, when you last sent them an email, when you last sent them a text message, those sort of things. So you can uh, keep keep on keep on top of your relationship if you like. So you've got to work at it. Uh, but I suppose my and my pro tip with agents is to be relentless. Um, don't get discouraged. You, you just it's it's being that consistency and persistency, I suppose. It keeps coming up, recurring thing, but um, keep talking to them, keep trying. Uh, eventually you, you break through or eventually they come to you with a site. You know, some people, you know, agents you haven't spoken to for a couple of months and all of a sudden they, they reappear, they bubble back to the surface with the site. So they can only sell you something they've got listed, of course. So mm. uh, once they get a listing, you're going to want to be top of mind for them to give you a call. So. Yeah, the key, key thing here is top of mind. Yeah, that's it. Um, fourth one, yeah. So it's, I guess I call it social media networking. Um, oh, went too far. Uh, and, and plenty of people are on social media, and, and they're on Facebook and they're on LinkedIn. Um, but I suppose it's about really being immersing yourself in like-minded people in property, in property development. Uh, I know some people are looking for multiple sites all the time, so I guess I'm doing it a lot more than someone that's just looking for one site. But it all helps if people see you're in the property groups. See you on LinkedIn. See you commenting. See you connecting. Um, probably my biggest deal I've ever done came through a Facebook message um, earlier in the. Well, it was actually last year, but it settled this year. The property for a 32 lot subdivision. So uh, that was via literally a Facebook message. So uh, no direct mail, no real estate agent. Um, just had to be in the right place at the right time. So uh, it's worth doing. And I guess you, I guess you're the the network you surround yourself with um, only makes you stronger. Uh, or when you need to solve some of your vendors' problems or they do end up having a development site. So I, you know, not just, you know, real estate agents, but yeah, town planners, builders, engineers, anyone associated with property uh, is generally working in property. They're interested in property. They like talking about property uh, mm. to connect with them and, um, you know, really immerse yourself in them. So, uh, so it definitely works and definitely, um, Obviously, I, I think it's on my next next slide, but certainly real estate agents, we were just talking about them, but certainly on LinkedIn, I find them more uh, receptive to connect and also to, to message via LinkedIn as well. So um, yeah. they, they obviously use that to promote themselves. So when they're getting contact and interest through that, um, uh, that adds a big thing. So like I said, yeah, I've definitely got multiple sites through either Facebook groups, through LinkedIn, through um, yeah, messages received through all the platforms as well. So, uh, and it can all be done on your phone. So it is something you can do on the go and while you're out and about. So mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah, and I suppose, yeah, that's why I, my automation, I have, obviously Danica helps me with, do a lot of my posts across social media. I do all the communicating with the people once they send messages. Um, yeah, that's what I was, yeah, my, I've definitely noticed uh, LinkedIn is more for real estate agents and it's easy to find real estate agents in your, you know, in Brisbane as well. Mm -hmm. 
for mm. example, or wherever you're living, that they, they're pretty well all on there. They've all got a profile uh, and you can make contact and you can send a, send a message pretty easily too as well. So, um, yeah. and there's a couple yeah. of Facebook groups, which I think probably the people in your group know about the first one. That's uh, your <laughs> sister site. But yeah, there's other sites out there, but those three sites I've actually set up you know, on my phone so I get notification for every time anything new happens in those sites. Just again, immersing yourself in what's going on in those, and there's thousands of people in all those sites now, but are putting mm. up sites or requirements or asking questions. So um, definitely, yeah, there's face-to-face -face networking, uh, which is a big, a big one as well, but I just find social media over the last two years, people can't get out and about as much, is um, just as popular. Yeah, and you're managing... As well. Absolutely. And you're managing to reach a lot more people with whatever your message is or people just seeing you. The more yeah. that you are I mean, networking is, is extremely powerful. It goes, it goes back to that whole know, like, and trust side of things. Because if people um, see you as someone who's developing in Brisbane and, yeah. or, you know, wherever you are, Melbourne, wherever, and, and you become known as the – the oh that developer that does things in Adley I've seen him or her post things up like just it is something for a lot of people if they're not used to um, using social media it's it definitely is a tool that's very cost effective it really only takes your time but if you're short on time look at ways that you can automate which Steve has, has provided some really great sort of automation tips here yeah, and I guess yeah, that's yeah the processes you can put in place to like we said it was a mm. it's a numbers game. So how do you increase the numbers without having to spend eight hours a day doing mm. it? So if there's ways of doing it or getting to yeah. more people faster, then yeah, you should be yeah, looking into it and adopting it into your into your daily life. Absolutely. Um, so number five, I think. I like is this. One. Almost the most important one, I think, and, and a lot of people talk about mindset and. And being a routine, I guess that's an automation for me. So, um, yeah, I'll just put down my, my little tips, I suppose, there about, you know, taking action every day. Um, like I said, even if it's just contacting one agent per day, mm. you do that, you know, that's seven a week, 28 a month, all of a sudden you're starting to build a very good network of real estate agents within a month. So, um, and I think we've touched on it too, yeah, being consistent, doing the same things each day, each week and each month um, over and over. I know this. I guess some people like to think there's a you know magic pill out there for finding development sites, but it really is the mindset and your routine and, and automating your routine as best you can um, with the numbers. Mm. Um, we've talked about being persistent, uh, follow up, follow up, follow up. So it probably needs three more. It's almost the five or six follow ups to get yep. the answer. Lots you of want. lots of FUs. Right? Yeah, <laughs> lots of FUs. Correct. <laughs> as many as you can get in a day. Uh, and a big one for me, I suppose, which I at the start was a little bit frustrated. It is. Being patient, it is knowing, trusting the process and knowing it's going to take time, knowing, yes, I sent 100 letters and didn't get a response, but um, knowing that in 12 months I might get, you know, seven responses from those people that, you know, in 12 mm. months' time. So it's just trusting the process, being patient, knowing, knowing, trusting, yeah, knowing, trusting that it's going to work, uh, which it does. Uh, and then a little shout out to, I guess, Tony Meredith Coaching, uh, who's who, who helps me um get started when I certainly start out in buyers as you said in my goals and and getting the routine and, and knowing what how to to be disciplined in yourself to make you mm. to make you take action every day and, and work towards your goals um so there it helps my, keep uh, you accountable it does, yeah correct oh he does absolutely so <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah so that's a little photo there so going from can't to can there you go yeah um, absolutely I love these tips particularly these last ones because it can be um, I mean, it can be demoralizing when you are constantly looking at sites and you're negotiating and you're, you know, you're, you're um, putting offers, but you've just got to go, yeah. you know, three feet from gold, three feet from gold. It's the next mm -hmm. one. It's the next one, you know, and, and missing sites isn't necessarily a bad thing. You sort of go, the next one's going to be even bigger and better and having that yeah. mindset of abundance. Yes, like, that's right. Yeah. To, just like trust yes yeah, it trust the process but trust like the right the right you know product the right site and the right deal is going to come to you yeah yeah absolutely it's about taking uh, action. Uh, sorry about taking action taking action that's it yeah so that's i think that's all uh for me yeah, that was just some of my contact details there but um great stuff um, fantastic i love this yeah, like, yeah it's just a high level sort of overview i guess yeah the, the devil's in the detail and 
Um, but yeah, you've got to start, just start and do a little bit of each one. So I try and do a little bit of each one each day, um, whether it be, you know, direct mail, really an easy, real estate agent looking online, it, it happens every day and then every week and all yeah. of a sudden you start to get a flow of sites. But yeah, it's not easy. It is <laughs> challenging, but you've just got to stick to it. Yeah. So if you're out there looking for development sites and you're finding, I'm not finding anything on realestate.com, I'm not finding anything on domain.com.au, have a think, you know, Steve's given you four other avenues. Is that four others? Well, either way. Uh, I've got a... I've got a mindset. You need to have the mindset. Your mindset all, you yeah. need to have the mindset. I think that's, that's the top one. But three or yeah. four other, other avenues to be able to look for development sites. So can you imagine you've got now four other channels. It's At the end of the day, it's a filter. If it's a numbers yeah. game, you've got to be able to spread, you know, open up that filter and funnel, sorry, funnel as wide as possible. So it really helps bring down and filter through more sites because it's about leads. It's similar to marketing. It's yes. about leads, leads, yeah. leads, and then finding the ones that that really that really stick. Um, last question from the audience: Do you do oh, the yeah. feasibility yourself or use someone else before presenting to clients? Um, I want to be a little bit careful with feasibility and making recommendations because I'm a licensed buyers agent. Um, uh, people might rely on those numbers. So certainly I give assistance in um, what sold recently, what land selling for in sale prices. Um, I've got a good feel of you know, what some of the costings are and, and building costings, but I generally leave that up to my buyers. But like I said, I'll mm. provide assistance in doing that. I do do quick ones for myself to see where I think it should sit before I start talking to the, um, to the owners uh, or when I'm talking to the owners to try and get a price out of them as well. Uh, but price is generally uh, you know, not the... It's normally the, the starting point for most conversations. That's what they are. Yeah. Well, how much is it worth? Um, mm. So, you know, I look at, you know, supporting sales, what other developers are going to pay. The interesting thing from my point of view, there's so many different types of developers out there that have different risk profiles and have different long and short term goals. So some of my development clients are happy to land bank, whereas others need a, a mm. profit within three to four months. That's a very different feasibility. So, um, there would be too many different types of feasibilities for the different buyers I have at the time for, for one site, for example. So uh, I generally give them information, as much information I can give them, and then it's really them seeing if it fits into their strategy. Um, that, and then we move forward you know, with an offer tailored around what their strategies and their returns and their risk profiles. Yeah, um, absolutely. Because it's not a one-size-fits-all because you could have a site that might look like it's for residential and someone decides they're going to put a childcare centre on it. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yes, it, and probably that one's about seeing angles that other people don't see. Uh, mm. And it might be land banking until the Olympics come in and then sell later or develop later or townhouses or apartments. You know, they might be looking to buy two or three blocks side by side. So, yeah. Um, and that's why you get, you know, developers get beaten out. You get beaten by other people because they've just got a different strategy at the, for that property. Mm, um, mm, mm, which absolutely. Is okay. We've got a few more comments here. Um, I work with site acquisition and encounter people like that every day. For some people, there's not enough amount of money that can persuade them to sell. Yeah, and you know, a lot of them have been there for decades. Yes. Yeah. yeah correct. Yeah, and, and they're you know they're happy to, to to die there as well. Almost they um, they just want to live out their years. I know my grandparents lived at their place till they were 97, I think. They mm. refused to leave. So, mm. uh, mm. yeah, it is. Yeah, money's not the answer to everything. But, um, yeah. yeah, some people just, yeah, they're emotionally attached. And, and selling a house or selling, you know, a property, especially a development site, is probably the biggest financial decision they make in their lives. It's either setting them up for retirement or it's setting up their kids or their estate for retirement. Um, so... Uh, that's yeah. It is it is a big decision for them, which mm. you know they've, they've got to come to be comfortable with the decision they make. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is my favourite one. Steve is a good one. Can you please expand in regards to VAs and how they benefit the process? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, um, I've been using Danica for almost two years now. I think two years in January. Um, so yeah, it's very much um, she does the day to day stuff for me without being asked effectively. So Danica works very well unsupervised. So I've, she's got a number of daily tasks, uh, weekly tasks and monthly tasks that she does. Um, we're all on, um, you know, using software to help us. So, you know, we're using Stash, we're using Google Drive. So um, the exchange of information is very seamless. Uh, so I can sit there and just see, you know, the database being updated or I can see Google Drive getting updated. Um, like the presentation here, 
I did the words. I didn't do any of the the other the um you know making it look pretty with all the photos and and the colours. That's all down in I can pretty well set a task, leave it, and then you know this afternoon it comes back. There it is in my inbox, ready to go. So it's things I'm not having to think about yeah. every day that just get done. So like the contacting agents, updating the database, sending out direct mail or targeting properties. So all of a sudden I've just got this momentum going every day uh, that I didn't need to create myself. I'm just steering the ship, if you like. Um, and you know, getting you know, getting the results. So I can then do that at scale, then, which is you know, even for an individual developer, the more it's a numbers game. So the more you you do, the more um, uh, the more opportunity to come through. So I couldn't get to the number of agents or owners or that just by myself. There'd be no way I could do it. Um, so having Danica or the virtual assistant help me do that, um, yeah, definitely frees up hours and hours and hours every day. If you work at that over a year. You know, it's enormous, enormous amount of savings. So, absolutely, because she works with you pretty much full time. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like I said, yeah, I don't have to give her a job to do every day. She just she knows what has to happen. Mm. You know, every day, and as even as inquiries come in or a new uh, off market property, she's got a whole process that she goes through, doing dial before you digs and town planning reports and contours before I even see it, before I even know we've got an opportunity. Mm. It's all presented in the folder and I get an email saying, here, look at the link. Let me know what you think. Yeah. And the agent's details. And then I just do that bit, the, the dollar productive tasks rather than the um, the yeah. grinding away behind in the back office. So She makes you look good, Steve. She does. <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, the presentation. I couldn't do what she sent, does. <laughs> you sent me the presentation. I'm like, wow, that looks really good. <laughs> Danica did that. Sorry, no, I, it, yes. I came up with the content. <laughs> That's right. I did but, some words. That was about all. Well, that's, um, you know, that, that consistency, we talked a bit about the consistency, being able to work smarter, not necessarily harder. Yeah, correct. Right? And, yeah. And, 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 and getting uh, the, the point that you make about being able to scale, but that's using processes, systems, having the right systems and processes in place, having yeah. the right people who can use the system so they know what to do. And then yep. your strategy, like if you combine these three systems, strategy and superstars, yes. um, then you've got a whole scalable business model. Yeah, correct. Which is why Steve is the king of development site <laughs> in Queensland. So thank you, Steve. Thank you very much for the for, for a huge amount of a huge value. Um, if anyone wants to get a copy of the slides, um, comment hunt H U N T below in the comments, and Steve slash Danica will reach out to you and send you um, a copy of the slides because you can actually click on those links. So that if you if you you've been through the whole presentation today, there were some links that you can actually go into and get access to um, the template template letter, those um, sites that Steve uses, and the filters that Steve uses as well. Again, huge 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 value from some of hunt 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 hunt. Oh, everyone's <laughs> hunting. Everyone's on the hunt, Steve. Danica's going to be a busy <laughs> lady tomorrow. Busy. That's right. Won't be me. It'll be Danica. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much, Steve. That no was problem. fantastic. You take Pleasure. care of yourself, um, and we'll see you again very soon. I can see you're going to be very busy in yeah, looks... the, the next in the next day. I think that was that was uh, enormous value. Thank you, everyone who's joined us this evening. Um, we'll see you. I hope you're doing well. We'll see you in next week's the business of property. Take care of yourself. Bye bye.